you know, you saw your name and heard about that. You know, um, first of all, excitement to just see my name at all. Um, you know, I'd seen the mock drafts and heard some things from my agents. Um, and just, you know, don't get your hopes up. Don't read into the mock drafts too much. They're not always right. Um, and I talked to a few teams um, throughout the week, just not anything serious, just trying to get to know me. And so I was, I was hopeful, um, but I didn't think it would be Minnesota. Um, that was a complete shock to me. Um, but it's definitely like a dream come true growing up. I was a Lynx fan. My parents brought me to games. Um, and, you know, when I talked about entering the draft of my family, they're like, well, what if you get drafted by the Lynx? And I was like, that's not going to happen. You know, like they're, they're too good. They're, you know, I just have them on a different level when I think about women's basketball. Um, so to know that, you know, I'm on their roster right now and that I'm going to training camp this weekend, is just, it's a dream come true. Sure. Did you get like a phone call from them, you know, after you got drafted or, 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 you know, how did that process go? And then what was that like, you know, getting a phone call from the team you grew up being a fan of? Yeah, I had no idea what to expect after I saw my name up there. Um, I called my agent and we talked about it and he said, you know, expect it to, to get some calls. And I think about 30 or 40 minutes after I heard from um, Cheryl Reeve, the head coach and um, she just kind of talked to me about why they picked me and what their expectations for me were, which was incredible to hear her talk about me as a player, to know that she knew my game was very exciting. Um, and, you know, just giving me some more details about what this week is going to look like. So, yeah, it happens very fast. For sure. And, you know, you said that she had, you know, expectations and stuff like that. You know, at what are those you know, expectations for you here, you know, as a, as, as someone who just got drafted onto a team that, that's really good. Yeah. Um, you know, they have a history of, of winning and being extremely talented, especially in my position. Um, so she said, she just expects me to come in and play with confidence and, you know, show them what I have in, in the time that they give me. Um, it's, it's very hard to make a, a roster. Um, especially as a draftee. Um, there's, there's just not a lot of room on rosters or salary salary caps and that kind of thing. So I, I think to have realistic expectations about what I'm going into, but also to go in and give it my all because they're expecting that. Thanks, Anna. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just going to go kind of down my screen here. Um, Bailey, you want to go ahead? Oh, sure. And Hannah, what has kind of been the last, what have the last two days kind of been like for you since you've been drafted? What has been, you know, who, how many people have reached out to you? What kind of has the atmosphere been like for you over the last couple of days? Yeah, I keep saying this to my friends and my family. My life just keeps seemed to, to going up on this roller coaster. And I, I keep thinking I'm at the peak and, you know, it just keeps going. It's been so fun. And exciting to see how many people were you know watching us during the sweet 16 and supporting me through that um and now supporting me in the draft and how many people were watching the draft just to see if chloe or i got called um i think it's uh, incredible you know people from my childhood or from high school have been reaching out and i think it's awesome how many people are hopping on the women's basketball train was there a sense of relief so to speak when you when you saw your name called as if you know okay I, I made it I was drafted in the WNBA yeah it's it's a big thing to kind of put it out there that you know I'm entering the draft especially as a mid-major you know you, you might not make it um, and I think Chloe and I both knew what we were doing and how big of a deal it was to kind of publicly say I'm entering the draft um, so to see my name yeah there was definitely a sense of relief and, you know, there's only two of you that are that are rookies that are going to that were drafted and going to camp. You know, what's that kind of like for you? Have you reached out to the uh, other players drafted? And, and what's that kind of like for you going forward as you get ready for training camp next week? Yeah, um, I feel kind of like a, a freshman in college again, the same kind of feeling. Um, I, I have connected with Kayla. Um, she's 
she seems like a very nice girl so far and I'm excited that there's someone else going through this with me. Um, I think we both get there on Friday and I'm excited to get to know her as well as the rest of the team. All right, thank you, Hannah. Mm -hmm. All right, Zach James. Hey, Hannah, congratulations. What was it like going to Wing Schemes as a kid and now what's it gonna be like getting to play on the floor at Target Center? Yeah, I don't know that that's fully sinking in yet. I grew up kind of idolizing these players and wanting my game to be like, like theirs, um, specifically Sylvia Fowles and Maya Moore. And to know that I'm getting to at least go through training camp with Sylvia Fowles in her last season is um, a huge honor. I'm excited to learn from her. She's a very um, experienced and talented player. So to, if I can pick at her brain and even pick up a few things from her, that would be an incredible experience. If it hasn't hit you yet, what do you think it will? Maybe when I get down there on uh, Friday or Saturday and start going through all the, these meetings and physicals and practice on Sunday, maybe it will hit me then. Um, it still feels kind of like a dream. Uh, I saw that Coach P uh, put up a picture of, of you out of practice, and, and I was her, part of her congratulating her. What was it like hearing from Coach P, even though she's gone, and, and just the work that she she helps you put in to get to where you are. Yeah, um, I think Coach P did so much for me as a player and so much for the university that I, even though she is gone, I think we can all still just be so grateful. Um, for me as an individual, she grew my game and then prepared me in other ways um, off the court that I don't even know if I've realized all of them yet, but definitely helped me mature into the player in person that I am today. So I'm extremely thankful to her. All right, good enough. Thanks, Hannah. Mm -hmm. All right, Zach Borg, if you want to go ahead. Hannah, I know you, you just mentioned it here a few minutes ago, and I, I remember last week too, but obviously making a roster is pretty <laughs> difficult as a rookie in the WNBA. Uh, have you and your agent already been kind of discussing some overseas options as well? What, what are you, what, what becomes the option if you don't make the roster? Yeah. Um, overseas is definitely an option. Um, it's something that we'll talk about a little more in depth as, as my process continues. And when that, when that step comes along, you know, it's similar to college basketball where you don't want to look too far in the future. Um, cause things change every day. Um, just like we're trying to make a roster here, people overseas are trying to do the same thing. Um, it's a very complex inner, the inner workings are very complex of the situation. So, I'm leaving a lot of that interesting in my agent for that. What do you think will wait be in your factor? Obviously, you've still got a lot to learn and develop, but what do you think bodes well for you in terms of hopefully being able to make the roster this year or somewhere down the line and uh, be able to stay in the WNBA? Yeah, I think for my size, um, I'm somewhat versatile. They wouldn't see me playing a true center probably. Um, like South Dakota has in the past. Um, you know, this year I got to showcase a little bit more of that mid-range or outside shooting and ability to, to, to still score at the rim um, against bigger players. And I think those skills offensively are going to help me a lot. And then I think defensively, my ability to guard in the ball screen will be um, a huge factor. Um, ball screens are um, kind of the core of the WNBA's offense. So my ability to guard in a ball screen will be huge. And uh, I know you mentioned going to Lynx games. Had you ever played at Target Center? I mean, I know obviously you were at Rogers. I don't know what the, the state tournament history was, but have you ever played there? And is that something, if you have it, that you, will be kind of a, another interesting thing for you? Yeah, unfortunately, Rogers never made it to the state tournament. So, um, this will be my first experience in the Target Center as a player. Is that kind of a, a little going to be maybe even more surreal than anything that's happened? Just as, as much as you shoot for that as a high school player. And then, like you said, watching their games to be on, whether it's just for a practice or not, is that going to be kind of a surreal experience? Definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of things in my life where I, I haven't been able to quite get there you know making whether it was making a certain team or um you know not playing at a student university or being at a mid-major so I think that this is just another 
thing that signifies that, um, you know, hard work can change any situation that you're in. And I'm very proud of that. Thank you. All right, Michael, go ahead. Hannah, uh, what are some of the things that the link said that they like about you as a player? Um, yeah, I'm, my conversation with Coach Reeve wasn't super long, but she did talk about liking my size and my versatility on offense um, and my ability to shoot as a big. Um, and then she's excited to see how I'm able to guard in a ball screen. So those are kind of her things that she's looking forward for me in training camp. You said you didn't expect it to be the Lynx, but what were you doing at the time when your name was called? Were you were you paying really close attention to the screen or were you up and up and sort of moving around? Yeah, so the, the kind of almost sad thing about the WNBA draft is unlike the men, they don't give it as much focus in the second or third round. So I was actually announced during a commercial break. <laughs> so we were watching, but I wasn't expecting, I mean, or really super locked in. Um, and then all of a sudden everyone around me was kind of celebrating and I was just shocked, you know, um, to see my name up there. Was that confusing? Like, how did you find out that, I guess, did you see it on Twitter first or? Um, I mean, so they still have it along the bottom of the screen. So my name was up on the screen, but it was during a commercial, but it was still very exciting. And I'm still very grateful that my name was called. Um, now, how long is training camp? Like, what's the minimum amount of time that you could spend with the team? Yeah, um, training camp is three weeks, and it goes all the way up to May 5th, which is the day before the first game. Um, and I get there on the 17th or start on the 17th, and you can be released at any time. So it just depends on how it goes. Even if you don't make the roster, what are some of the things that you hope to, you know, get out of the process, you know, as far as, you know, starting your professional future? Yeah, I think just to learn from the people that are there. Um, anyone who's going to be at camp has something that I can learn from them. Um, so I'm just going to try to go in there with an open mind and see what I can pick up. Other than actually seeing your name called, what stands out as the coolest thing that happened during this process? Oh. I think because I, I mean, just knowing the links and following them, seeing them put my image on their media and having them tweet or post about me um, was very exciting. <laughs> Is that it? Okay. Um, Jackson, do you want to go ahead? Hi, I don't have any questions, but congrats, Hannah. Thank you. All right, and then I'm not sure it was D. Harris there. Are you there? Okay. Does anyone else have it? Oh, yeah, just one. I one quick one. How long do they have your draft rights, Hannah? I mean, if they were if they were to release you, would they still have the option to sign you, or do you would you at that point be a free agent to whoever if somebody wanted to come along? Yeah, so I'm signing a contract today, um, and I believe it has me until 2025 or 26. Um, so if I decide to play overseas, then they can call me back at any time. Um, if someone were, were to retire or um, due to injury. Okay, thanks for that clarification. I actually have two more quick ones. Um, now, obviously Sunday is probably when you get a lot of this stuff, but you have, have you gotten any uh, Minnesota gear yet? I haven't. Um, I'm currently on family vacation in Florida. So I actually changed my flight to go back home early um, and I'll get there Thursday, but I am excited for that aspect of it too. And in terms of when, you know, sort of the season started and that type of thing, like if you were not to make a roster, would you have any time to breathe in between when you have to sort of decide on overseas and you know what's going to happen next? I think I would have a little bit of time. Typically, those don't start till late summer or you know fall, but I'm not completely sure on that. All right. Any additional questions for Hannah? All right. Thank you so much for your time, Hannah. Appreciate it. Yep. And good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.